She's got 30 years of experience in civil engineering, beginning work with KYTC back in 1990 and retiring as state highway engineer at the end of 2017. Yeah, she started when she was 11 years old. It's hard to believe that. Patty graduated from UK with a degree in civil engineering. She currently lives in Litchfield with her husband, Jerry. She has two married daughters and two amazing grandchildren, Keller and Arlen. With that, I'll turn it over to Patty and Jake. Hold your applause, please. I love seeing all, all the pieces, all the faces in person. Uh, we do, I host this the division of planning, hosted a, a meeting with like 100 people or something every three months. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a hybrid, which is like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we got like 30%, you know, attending in person. And then like 70% are online still. But uh, does it say how many people are online? Let me check. Participants, 22. So we got 22 of y'all out there in the cyber world. Jeff Dick, I see you on there. Jay. Daniel Holker's on there. Okay. Yeah, I see some of the planners and area, area development district coordinator as well for transportation cabinet. So I see a lot of familiar faces out here too. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's an honor to be here today. It's been a pleasure working with Patty Dunaway, Michael Baker International. Um, it's great to have that flexibility, you know, have the partnership. Uh, if we get booked, you know, the cabinet staffing and that kind of stuff. We reach out to the consultant world and uh, you guys help us a ton. So we appreciate your help. Anybody that's out there in the consultant world. Let's see, I looked up a, a cartoon, you know, trying to have something funny when we started. And uh, there was a picture, you know, I was coming in from Frankfurt today and it was, it was a wreck or something was going on. It was all backed up. But anyway, uh, this cop had pulled over an old lady who was sitting in her car and he said, I'm sorry to bother you, ma'am. I thought you were knitting. And she said, I didn't know you. I didn't know you were knitting. I thought you were weaving, you know, old transportation planner joke. All right, let's see, start with the reason we're here today. Let me get the clicker. Uh, long range statewide transportation plan. Can you guys hear me okay if I stand like this? Okay, now I have to lean over. Let me see if the clicker works. Jake was checking on the participants and lost the slides. There we go. So my name is Jacob Huber. And uh, Patty Dunaway is with me. Uh, the Jungle Gym intro, yeah, it's um, the reason I put that in. You guys are probably wondering why I had that in there. By no means it's the best jungle gym in the world, but to my kids it is because they have access to it, right? And the relationships there with their dad. You know, somebody cares about them, has something there for them to go play on. And I love, I love the play, uh, you know, work play balance. I see a few more people walking in. Take a seat wherever. Okay, sorry, I just click. So topics we're covering today, essentials, why, how, what, schedule, vision, goals, objectives, scenario planning, plan of action, implementation plan, and the next steps. And this quote I had to throw in there, Dwight uh, Eisenhower was kind of famous for this one. It says, plans by themselves are nothing, but planning, plan, <coughs> excuse me, planning is everything. So it kind of hints at the, the whole reason we're here, you know, is the plan is great to have, but it's always changing, right? You got to have a network of people in place to update it, you know, year to year, year to year, year to year. So we'll start out with why, you know, why are we doing this? I was mentoring with Jason Swallow a while back, you know, probably been five years already. We read this book called Start With Why by Simon Sinek, and he was saying, a lot of people will intro a topic, but we don't just tell you what it is, like you care about it already, you know? But uh, he said, start with why, so they give you a little bit a little bit of reason, you know, to care. So why we're doing it is we care about you, right? We care about Kentucky. And we're trying to, you know, get you back and forth to people, places that you love, and, you know, businesses and things, trying to get the supply chain going, keep the economy strong. And then what, you know, how are we doing it with this amazing team of consultants, Patty and the consultant, um, and internally when we've got 5,000 some people with transportation cabinet, and we're all working together to deliver this transportation system. And um, the next, I might think I've got a slide in here. On, uh, you know, this is this is in the, the plans knowledge was page, you know, Michael, Mikhail Pelfrey and I are in the division of planning, but we, you know, the secretary's office, the, the highway engineer's office, you know, all these people at the cabinet, uh, public affairs, uh, vehicle regulation, and then the industry, you know, with the industry folks and all that kind of stuff to reach out into the community. And Federal Highways, obviously, you know, uh, it kind of, kind of part of the why, too. They give us money to help us do this thing. And uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of regulations uh, that, we, that we try to abide by. Patty's been able to be graceful in navigating all that stuff for us. And then uh, 15 area development districts, nine 
Metropolitan Planning Organizations and the 12 Highway District Offices. And you can see the jigsaw puzzle, you know, when we're trying to coordinate efforts and get everybody in a room, uh, the boundaries are a little different. You know, each region for the, the you know, MPOs, the ads, and the district offices, you've got some overlap and the planners in the room know this. Uh, so it's it's by design, really. So you're, you're intentionally crossing borders, you know, and reaching and, and connecting and trying to understand each other's uh, planning world. So, uh, yeah, what is it? It's a 20-year horizon plan. Um, it's a policy-based plan. So like our six-year plan is, a, is more of a project-based plan. You know, every two years we get funded by the legislature. So that's more of our project-based plan. And then a shift is tied in with that pretty close. But this plan is a 20-year policy plan. So it, you know, we're trying to gauge public feedback, industry feedback, um, where do we want to go? You know, we kind of research where we're at. And then we're trying to figure out where we're going to go in the future. So we'll talk about that more uh, as the presentation was launched with scenario planning, things like that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Patty Dunaway. Like I say, excellent consultant team. She can kind of talk about the there's four or five of you, I think, on the consultant team, High Street and Razor Communications, and a couple of other ones that um, they did all the research on the documentation and the envisioning process. Uh, so I'll turn it over to her to kind of go over the, the steps. Yep. Thank you, Jacob. And good morning, everyone. So some of you may have seen the presentation at KBT. So we kind of were through the first phase then. We've been very busy the last few months in the second phase. So just to kind of give you a quick update. So with this long range plan update, we first wanted to take a look at all the existing plans, um, all the various modes, because this is a multimodal plan um, and it covers all of the transportation system in Kentucky. So we wanted to make sure it was all inclusive so we made sure that we gathered data from all modes. Uh, if you saw Jacob on that acknowledgement page, we had a vision executive committee membership um, that had the leaders of KYTC, Federal Highways, um, and, and some other leaders in, in the state. Then we had the multimodal advisory committee. Some of you all in this room were part of that. And we had the statewide planning group that meets with the division of planning uh, often. So all of you all were key stakeholders that gave input during um, this first phase and into the second phase. So in a few minutes, we'll talk more about the scenario planning analysis that was done. Jacob's going to cover that. And then I'll lead into actually the uh, development of that draft plan that took all of the input and it also included an Im implementation plan, which this is new for Kentucky. Um, in other states with some of their long range plan updates, they have been doing implementation plans um, and we wanted to do that here too, to provide some tasks to help Kentucky, KYTC, all modes of transportation to focus on, to help keep this as a living active document and keep, continue to move uh, Kentucky forward. So the next phase that we're getting ready to enter into starting on October 3rd will be the review of the draft plan. Um, and we have a survey that'll go along with that that we'll talk about more here in just a minute. From all those various uh, input that we got from those uh, committees, as well as the first survey that was done. I want to thank everybody that participated in that. We had some 8,300 participants. We heard and got great input. Uh, and this is just a word cloud that kind of represents what we heard that day. So for all of us here in Kentucky, maintaining or taking care of the transportation system that we have is very important. But also you see safety jumps out there. You see the various modes with pedestrians and bike lanes and mass transit, light rail. A lot of those were to the forefront uh, for us as well. But then you had also, you know, making sure we have accessibility um, and things like that, that all went into the development of the vision for this compilation of this long range plan. So also the national performance measures that are provided by the USDOT. We wanted to make sure that those were incorporated. For one, it's a requirement, but it's also important to make sure that we're focusing here in Kentucky, our transportation system, just like we are nationwide. So you can see that the vision that was developed is for a viable, reliable, and resilient multimodal transportation system to provide access and mobility for all users for the safe movement of people and goods. To support this vision, we also came up with goals and guiding principles. So the goals are the one things that we can continue to focus on, but the guiding principles to me was, was really key because those are 
I don't want to say the buzzwords, but those are those topics that are important to us here in Kentucky, as well as nationwide. They include the quality of life, equity, adaptability and sustainability, seamlessness, and economic vitality. So it talks about us personally in our lives here in Kentucky and how we interact, how we get from place to place. We want that seamlessness. We want our transportation system to be adaptable and sustainable. So we wanna focus on that. And here in Kentucky, just you know, recently with all the economic development, we wanna make sure that we are prepared for that and that we make sure we consider that uh, in everything we do in our planning. So, like I said, the scenario planning process was new to Kentucky. Uh, Jacob was pretty excited about this, uh, you know, coming in the first time throughout this plan update. So I'm going to let him talk to him. And you all will see Jacob's very passionate about this stuff. So it's, it's been exciting to work with him. Yeah, thanks, Betty. And uh, some of the slides, you know, if you can, these are all in the draft plan. So when you review it, you'll see these in detail. So if they look a little small, you know, like some of the wording and stuff, this is basically a slide out of the, the plan, right? So uh, you have to weed through there when you take the survey, this next survey that Patty will talk about later. You have to weed through there and read every little piece of this and let us give you feedback. Okay, so yeah, scenario planning, it was kind of new to me. So it was a learning curve. Uh, I came from construction world where, you know, you got a set of plans and you built it, you know, there's a lot, a lot goes into it. See Dave sitting back there, he knows firsthand, uh, all of the people involved, you know, all the people you got to call and things when you need to get running something and cover something. So scenario planning helps. It helps you just be better prepared, help the boots on the ground uh, that much more. And, um, you know, the cabinet, it was the first time that I, that I was aware of, I think first time the cabinet's incorporated in a long range plan. And, um, you know, Patty had, you know, consultants high street working with Michael Baker. And they did all this research, you know, they were gathering all this, uh, the past plans we had, the past revenue, and getting projections uh, for 20 some years in the future. You know, that's how it's kind of tricky to do. You know, how do you do that? But, um, you know, they used their professional expertise and uh, professional judgment to give us some revenue projections. So we had four, we came down to four scenarios. Uh, it says they're exploring certainty, stress test, risk, uh, be prepared, you can overinvest. Um, we call it stranded. I heard the term the other day too, stranded investment, where it's, it's not really uh, generating anything. And where you can underinvest and you miss some opportunities possible. So the four scenarios we came up with were survival modes, which is like, you know, wars or pandemics, you know, like we had the last few years, um, severe weather events, high energy prices, stuff like that. You know, it's kind of the, it's not really doom and gloom. It's just the survival mode. You know, everybody's kind of, your money, the money might be tied up other places because you've got other priorities and that kind of thing. And then there's a live work local, which, you know, rather than everybody just moving to the big cities, living locally, you know, not having the long commute times um, and, you know, having the sustainable communities and things like that. So that's the scenario. And global market growth is, you know, we're kind of in global, I mean, we're definitely in a global economy, but like booming freight, you know, booming kind of uh, heavy transportation type growth. And then tech innovations, where it's like you got a lot of telecommuters, you got a lot of like teleworking type stuff where they might not be using the network as much. Um, so what do you do then? You know, you, uh, you try to you try to research these trends the best you can as you go. Uh, but but we came down to those four and we kind of had a meeting of the minds, you know, we, we uh, at the cabinet, we had, you know, secretary's office, state engineers, I say our engineer's office and the different offices around the, the uh, you know, central office building and district offices. And, you know, we were, we started with like 12 scenarios and we got down to four. But uh, we took this data that the consultant had researched on the you know, investments that we've made, you know, where we had like a baseline. And then they kind of projected it 25 years to kind of give us an idea of how much money you spend in each of these programmatic areas of like, uh, you know, roads and bridges, uh, transit, ferries, safety. And for each different future, how does that change your investments? Like you got to take a little out of this pot, pay a little more extra into this pot. And this uh, decision lens tool was on, uh, they were part of her team as well. But uh, they've got these little speed dial looking things that, you know, if you're in the green, it's kind of like over investing a little bit, raise a little under investing. There was kind of a sweet spot, you know, if some of the different scenarios had the color swaths were a little bit different uh, links. And it was for performance goals, you know, like the, 
you know, if Tracy's in here or not, but uh, there's performance goals you got to the feds are kind of looking for that we're trying to hit along the way as well. So you got this money you're trying to do, and then you're trying to hit the different targets. And uh, so, you know, it was fun. I mean, by no means do we have like four secretaries in you know each group or whatever we have one. So it was just kind of the the working the working people. That was the that was the intent was to was to get um, like how does it affect your job? You know, in working on highways or working in maintenance or wherever you're at in the cabinet, how does it affect your job with this different future? So we were able to pull out some of those ideas and consolidate and put them in the plan. And uh, the main goal, you know, in my mind, I mean, we came up with some great action plan from Tasha Plan that Patty will talk about in a minute. But uh, the main the main goal in my mind was to get people thinking that way, like you're part of a big team. So you know, it's one thing if you want to argue for more money, but also understand you got all these different pots that we're trying to fund and keep the system going. And the plan is very multimodal in nature. Uh, the Fed guidance is kind of that way, but it's also, you know, there's a lot of different factors for that. But um, so it's it's a neat way to get people's brains thinking about all the different modes, not just highways, but, you know, rail and freight and water, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, with that, and uh, like I say, coming from construction, this, you know, I've got to see my old boss back there in the back corner looking at his phone. Uh, but in construction, we, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of fires we had to put out on the spot, and it's it's just nice to know that this effort's being made and planning to get people talking. You know, so when you, you always know when you got a problem, like whatever you're going to do, it always helps to have the phone pick up and call somebody that you know is involved early on, knows who who has the funding or who has the intel to get something done. So the implementation plan was very important to me, uh, and us um, to have this long range plan, but also what actionable steps can we take to get it done and you know who can find it. So. How do you come on back up here? I'll turn it over to you to talk about some of these specific steps. And then I'll come back and say bye. All right, thank you, Jacob. So as Jacob mentioned, like I said, it is a very uh, much a team effort um, from everybody. Um, like I said, the Michael Baker team, he mentioned several of our partners with High Street, Razor, uh, <laughs> Uh, as well as Decision Lens uh, and Morrison Associates. I'm probably going to forget somebody, but we had a great group. And like I said, it took this full team to get to this point. And this is where I kind of wanted to focus our presentation on today, because this is what kind of propels us into the future and keeps this thing as a living document that we hope will be a resource uh, for all uh, agencies, multimodal groups, that kind of thing. So we talked about those existing plans. So Kentucky, uh, and all the different modes have lots of different planning studies that are going on. You all can see presentations from other ones like the Complete Streets was just right before us. Um, and there's many other ones that were included that we reviewed, kind of did summaries of, um, and then kind of come up with modal reports for each of the various uh, modes of transportation and then the scenario planning analysis. So Jacob kind of talked about that workshop that uh, was really good in drawing out the leadership's opinions. And then all of that was funneled through the vision that I presented to you a little bit earlier so that we could develop uh, the plan of action and the implementation plan, which is kind of the key outputs uh, from this plan update. So from those breakout sessions at the workshop, we came up with these categories that we kind of heard over and over again and going through the decision lens process, looking at funding, um, considering the needs, looking at all modes. So we had these funding and revenue, programming and project decision making, uh, then KYTC's organizational structure itself and standards and processes. So from that, the team kind of developed recommendations for policy changes or new policies, um, strategies for investment, new programs, changes to existing program structure, and organizational changes. So we had a compilation from each of these four categories that basically was kind of like a brain dump. We just kind of thought through everything that we could possibly come up with that might uh, work into tasks. So the next step was developing these uh, implementation plan tasks. And guys, this is where we are in the process right now. Today, I've asked uh, Mikkel and Jacob to kind of get final approval from KYTC leadership, Federal Highway leadership, um, because we wanted to make sure that they were comfortable with these tasks that we were uh, kind of throwing out there. Um, just starting with the first category there, with that funding and revenue category, we all know here in Kentucky, we're a little bit unique 
in the fact that we have to go through, uh, our highway plan has to go through the legislature and get it approved, as well as, you know, the funding that goes into the road fund. Um, other modes of transportation have various different ways that they get their funding. So it's, it's kind of a challenge. And coming up with some tasks that I highly recommend you look at our draft plan, just to kind of see some of the things we think are recommendations for possible changes or improvements. Um, and of course, we are gonna also, we're gonna mention who is responsible for that. So in that first category of funding and revenue, the legislators will have to be a big part of that conversation. It'll be led by the secretary's office, state highway engineer's office, and I'm sure they'll pull various divisions in just like they do during any legislative session so that we can talk to them about the funding needs, about possibly adjusting how the, the funds within the, the road fund get divvied out to um, line items that it goes to. We will talk about, okay, do we need to consider more of what uh, Deputy Secretary Mike Hancock calls a transportation fund versus a road fund so that you can consider all the modes of transportation. That was something that's been a big topic of ours because our modal partners that have participated, you know, they really struggle with getting funding. Um, you know, within KYTC, you got the Department of Aviation. In the past, they've been able to get some designated funding, some $10 million. Here lately, it's been a struggle. They just haven't had that. So that's just one example. Um, you know, buses, transit, you know, all of us try to work together so that we make this seamless system and provide to the people of Kentucky. So that's the first example, the programming and project decision making. So Kentucky KYTC has implemented the shift process. So looking at it, and there's been great iterations of it and making improvements. Um, you know, John Moore uh, was kind of the, the father of that and getting it started whenever I was still with KYTC, uh, getting that process going. And I've seen a lot of improvements, but we have some recommend, recommendations that could be done to shift to include more consideration for other modes possibly looking uh, earlier on at environmental utility issues, things like that, as well as considering the weights for access management, um, economic development. So making some adjustments to that in the consideration. So that kind of falls within that second category. The next, the uh, KYTC organizational structure. So one, KYTC, you know, historically has you know, kind of had trouble being able to retain staff. Um, see, now it's for us, me as a consultant, along with several of y'all in this room, that's an issue for us as well. Uh, making sure that you have that experience and that knowledge within your organizational structure so that you can continue to carry it forward and train others, as well as making sure that you have the various divisions or departments that you need. So one of the recommendations is to consider the creation of a new division within KYTC. Like I said, that's also has to involve the legislators in, in order to, to get that done. So it is a challenge, but, but to kind of consider, you know, this sustainability and resiliency, uh, as well as our cybersecurity and kind of how all that intertwines. So that is an example of a recommendation that comes out of that category, as well as ways for KYTC um, and throughout all modes to be able to uh, build up people so that they want to join our industry and that the others want to, the experienced people want to share with the new people we have. And then the last one, that standards and processes updates, that's just taking a look at within KYTC, uh, within the way that the funding is distributed again, as well as the various processes and making some suggestions for improvements. Wish I could have shared with you all the list of tasks today, but also wanted to make sure that you all uh, wanted to tease you a little bit. So hopefully that you'll go to that draft plan uh, and review it. Um, Katie and, and Keith did a great job going through their section by section um, in their complete streets. So I didn't want to focus on that because I really wanted to uh, kind of tell you all just how we got there. And the, the primary thing, if you all don't have time to read our 100 page document, I understand. I'm very busy as well. It will have an executive summary. Uh, and then it also, it's going to have that bro broke out task list for each of these categories within the implementation and kind of a conclusion. Um, so we ask that you please join us in reviewing that. 
the next few steps. Like I said, we will be sending out resource agency letters. Some of you all, your, your agencies will be receiving them. And then the actual survey will be released. Uh, we will have hard copies that will be placed at our statewide planning partners office. So the ads, MPOs and highway district offices, as well as central office for those that want to do, review a hard copy. And then electronically, we will be distributing it. I uh, just ask that if you are on the distribution list that you share it within your organization or your committee lists, things like that. And then after the review, we will have that survey. So the survey basically tries to draw out you know, your thoughts, seeing if you all feel that we met the goals, met the vision um, that has been set and trying to place, um, I guess, a path forward for all of us here in Kentucky for our multimodal program. So, like I said, we want to make sure that we keep it. There's a, just a snapshot of that survey. It's kind of in its final iteration now. That survey will end on November 2nd. It's that 30-day federal review. It will be also housed on our story map website for the project um, so that you can go there um, and take, a, take the link to both the survey as well as uh, the various documents that compose that. There are appendix that will be available on this website as well, so that you, if you're interested particularly in one mode, you want to dive in and, and really do the data crunch and how we got to the recommendations and the various things that we found there. But like I said, this is a, a living document. These tasks are gonna help us continue to uh, move forward, uh, focus on continual improvements, and you know who knows what we're gonna be facing in the future. Jacob talked about those scenarios that we kind of boiled down to those four. And guys, if you just think about it, we have faced those already just here within these last couple of years with, with the pandemic, you know, kind of having to force us into that survival mode. Like I mentioned, the economic development boom that we've got with the uh, battery plants that are coming in, in addition to what we already had here in Kentucky uh, with our, our hubs. Uh, for transporting for freight movement. So all of those not only are likely, they are already happening. So this will help us to kind of prepare, uh, looking at our full transportation system and trying to make in some changes so that we can improve it and be responsible with the transportation system that we work in and, and use and our families use every day. So I'll turn it back to Jacob. Yeah, thanks, Betty. So let's uh, see. Well, we have like one more slide here, I think. Uh, we got any questions in the chat? I know he's asking questions, but we're not asking any questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. So next slide. So to take the survey, like we had one survey already. It was public outreach. I know everybody in here took it already. But uh, this video was made for. It was like a partnership with you know public affairs, the cabinet, and the consultant, Ranger Communications, and. Uh, the secretary was on, you'll see him on here, as long as it plays, let me play it for you. And it's not the, we'll probably have a different one, kind of an updated one in October 3rd is when the second survey is going out. But you can, if you haven't watched this already, I'm going to play it because I thought it was cool. The Commonwealth is going places to work, school, shopping, games, grandma's house, our spacious park, and countless other destinations. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet is working to make sure that you get there safely and efficiently. But we need your help. We're updating our long-range transportation plan and would like your input. Our goal is to meet your needs for traveling in and around Kentucky while preparing our transportation system to adapt to changes as we move forward. We need your voice telling us not the time to travel now, but how you want to travel in the future. You know, every one of us relies and depends upon transportation to get us where we need to go, to connect us with our job, with friends and family, to the people and the places that we love and care about. But transportation is more than just about cars and roads. We want to help Kentucky get where they want to go, however they want to get there. And that means whether it's by car or by bus or by boat or on a bike or on foot, or even in the plane. We want to help Kentucky get to where they need to go. Kentucky's long-range plan is updated about every seven years to stay current and meet the needs of today's rapidly changing transportation environment. 
The last thing we finalized in 2014. As we now update our long range plan, we will analyze the data, trends, issues, and forecasts that affect all modes of transportation throughout Kentucky. We will also be gathering and evaluating valuable input from the people throughout the Commonwealth who use the system. And that starts with you from improving travel safety to reducing congestion to preparing for new modes of travel. We need your feedback. Once our plan is complete, it will be used to guide transportation policy decisions and statewide investment strategies for the next 25 years. Our mission is to provide the people of Kentucky and those that travel through our state with an efficient, environmentally sound, and safe transportation network. Multiple opportunities to provide your suggestions and opinions will be available over the course of our year-long planning process. And you can get involved right now by going to our website and taking our interactive survey. It's quick and it's easy, and it's a great way to make sure your voice is heard. Kentucky, we all have an important role to play in the future of our transportation system. Let's make sure we get there together. Yeah, thank you, Secretary Gray. So, uh, like I say, if you go to that website, the common. Uh -oh. If you go to that website, uh, obviously, it won't be the interactive survey. It's not going to be up yet. But October 3rd, uh, we'll have a new one for the draft plan. And show of hands, anybody take the first one? Anybody take the draft? Yeah. Hey, all right. Uh, so you kind of know the process already. But those of you that are new to it, uh, October 3rd, like I say, the, the website is right there. Or you can Google. I think I just Googled uh, whatever your search engine is, being or whatever. If you Google like KYTCL or STP, It'll pull up the website. So uh, something I've been learning about the marketing world is there's a lot of tips and tricks there. How are we looking on time? Um, time is it? 9.33, okay. When's the next presentation? 9.40, sweet. Yeah, we'll get you out of here. That's the last slide. Like anybody got any questions for me? Uh, has anybody done scenario planning? Show of hands, anybody? One, two, three. So it'd be new for everybody. Everybody can learn a little bit something about scenario planning. I kind of like the idea for like uh, you know, my house. We're going to do some scenario planning at home with the kids. So, you know, figure out four different futures and four different budgets. You know, maybe I can try. Uh, has anybody got questions for long range plan? Anything that you're curious about or uh, would like us to implement? You know, things that maybe if you're familiar with long range plans that you wish Kentucky would do. Anybody got anything like that today? Nothing. Everybody's uh, what, hungry or thirsty. I have to think of some more questions. Patty, you have any more questions? Should we ask me anything else? Nobody's asked any questions on mine. It's a reminder. I will add, though, um, if you haven't done so already, the easiest way for you to fill out your, your uh, survey 